Yeah. <laughs> so, um, let's see. Lucy Hancock came to the farm to see if we uh, had some information about how we use forecast data on our farm. And uh, we discussed the possibility of having more um, data collection for in terms of uh, temperature and other kinds of weather, uh, you know, rain gauges and um, soil moisture probes and things like that to see if we could get a better assessment of what's going on on the farm and um, how the soil is responding to rain events and things like that. So um, we we're pretty excited and um, uh, we've We've, uh, it's been a fun adventure to find out what um, ha um, exactly how the weather is affecting our fields and our crops and the soil and everything that's happening on the farm. And um, I know you use forecasts <clears throat> from NOAA. I know that you use them in planning. Um, a lot of farmers in the world don't have forecasts that go beyond a day or two. But I know that you use longer-term forecasts all the time. I wondered if you could describe some times when you have used forecasts of what was going to happen in three or five days or next week and, and how they've helped you. Well, we, we use forecasts constantly. We're always looking at the weather forecast. And what, what we're looking for is what kinds of weather changes are coming up and um, that's going to affect the kinds of things that we do in the field. So, for example, right now it's summertime. I need to know when it's going to be raining. Um, I have certain activities that I do right after it rains. I have, you know, such as pulling things out of the ground that when the soil is really dry, it's hard to get staples and posts and things out of the ground. Um, when, when it's about to rain, I like to do my planting. When it's actively raining, I, I do things indoors. I mean, it, it definitely affects the, the whole plan for the week. So the sooner we can know when, when these things are going to happen, the more, um, the more effective we can do, we can be in, in, uh, in, the, in the choices that we make. And, and it happens all the time that we, we get bad forecast data and we uh, make bad choices. <laughs> and, then we, and then we suffer for it. Or the same is true in reverse, that we get a good idea of what's coming up and then, and then we can make wiser choices about about what we're going to do. So for example, recently we did not realize that it was going to rain the next day and I chose to have my husband fix the tractor, which was an indoor job, and instead of planting our cover crop, you know, because I, so I looked after our daughter while he fixed the tractor and it, had we realized that it was going to rain the next day, we would have had uh, we would have done the reverse. I would have seeded the cover crop and then he would have fixed the tractor the next day in the rain. So. Now, I, I know that you irrigate sometimes. Um, do, your, um, do you make irrigation choices depending um, on what the forecast says? Um, yeah, we definitely adjust our irrigation based on whether, um, whether it's going to be raining and especially long-term projections. So, um, we might know that it's not going to rain tomorrow, but if we knew that it was going to rain at the end of the week, then we would spend that valuable time planting. But if we know that it's not going to rain for the whole week, then we'll run around irrigating because it's not going to make any sense to plant if it's not going to rain on what we've just planted. So um, it makes it, it has a big impact in what, what we decide to do every day. Do forecasts of wind matter to you at all? Um, less of an impact on us. Um, it will affect if we're, you know, if we were going to put plastic on the greenhouse, we wouldn't want to do that on a windy day. Or if we're going to um, put floating row cover on a field, we would use a day when it's not very windy. Um, generally, when we transplant, we try to do that when it's not especially windy. So there's a few things um, that that have to do with wind, but it's, it's marginal. It's not a big issue for us. If you knew that next week was going to be really dry and have, and have, um, and if, if somebody said, look, next week is just going to be blazing hot, uh, just that that's what's going to happen, okay, would that lead you to make any particular choices about what you're going to do next week? Um, let's see. It's okay.
okay if you say no. <laughs> yeah, no, we definitely, <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out what, what would we do really? If we knew it was going to be super hot and not going to rain. And then I'm going to ask you, what if I, somebody told you there's going to be a deluge on Wednesday? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we knew that it weren't, if, that, it, that there was no rain in the forecast for the next week, week and a half, then we would, um, you know, we have a lot of tender young plants in the fields right now. We would try to water. We would prioritize them, and then we would start watering the things that are yielding fruit for us right at this moment. So things like tomatoes and peppers that we have right now, we would want to start watering them so that they would continue to produce. Um, and then uh, if we knew that it was definitely going to rain pretty hard, um, one thing that happens when there's a hard rain is that if we have just planted something, sometimes the seed can wash away. So if we know there's going to be a whole lot of rain in a short amount of time, then maybe we put off tilling up the soil just to keep the soil in place. Um, and we might put off seeding really small seeded crops. Um, but on the other hand, if we know it's going to rain, then, you know, in general, we tend to be more likely to plant stuff. And, and certainly we wouldn't spend all that time irrigating if we knew that it was about to rain. Um, out of all of the different <coughs> weather sensors that the farm has, it seems to me the one you're most interested in um, is soil moisture. Isn't that right? That's the one you, you really, that you, you, you want to experiment with and move around. Is that right or did I make that up? Well, I, I feel like there were, there's definitely two things that, that have been the, the most interesting to us. So, um, one is definitely the soil moisture because um, we, there seems to be quite a difference between what looks dry and, and how dry dry is. <laughs> wet and how wet it really is. So, for example, we don't usually irrigate much on this farm, and um, so if it seems like there's any moisture in the soil, I'm not inclined to spend my time irrigating, because that, that particular job, even though we have access to well water, it takes a lot of labor, and labor is expensive for us, and we have a lot to do, and we don't want to waste our time um, uh, watering if we don't have to. On the other hand, it seems like from the soil moisture data and then watching the impact on the plants growing, um, we've been missing out on a lot of yield that we could have had if we had spent that time watering. So I think this should the soil moisture data should help us hone in on what, um, what the optimum moment is for us to, to really target the irrigation versus um, just letting it go because uh, because we have better things to worry about. Um, uh -huh. The other thing that, that the other thing that's been that we hope to use more that we just didn't get a chance to this year at, at the at the time when we started this project, um, we'd like more just temperature data from the greenhouse because um, there's a quite a distance between the greenhouse and my home, and uh, if if it gets too cold in the greenhouse, I lose plants, and that happens, I'd say about every other year, I'll, I'll lose a bunch of plants in the greenhouse because I let them get too cold. So, on the other hand, I can also lose plants if I let them get too hot. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, it'll be nice to have just accurate thermometers in the greenhouse that are connected to a computer in my house so that I can be monitoring the greenhouse better and not sitting in it constantly, which obviously I can't do because I have a family. Now, that would be really interesting. I was interested that you were, um, um, and uh, that you and your team want that we're going to put soil moisture out in a pasture. How is that going to help? I just I did, that was interesting. Why? <laughs> what is that going to tell us? Um, our our farm manager Michael Heller is the one who manages the cows, and he is experimenting with two types of uh, grazing systems. So we have grass-fed beef cattle which means they are fed completely by the grass that's grown on this farm. We harvest it in the summer to feed them in the winter, and then they harvest it themselves all summer long to feed themselves. <laughs> um, so, so his two systems, one is the, his typical system, he leaves the cows in a single pasture that might be, he might have a couple dozen head of cows on about 10 acres, and he might leave them there for about two days. Um, and then move them to the next pasture. For this new technique called mob grazing, 
he splits that same size pasture up into, let's say, five different paddocks or ten different paddocks, and he moves them every few hours. So that means they are much more compacted in terms of the, the impact. Um, they're, they're stomping all over the grass in a really small area, and they're moving much more often. Um, so you use potentially the same amount of land or possibly less, but you use it slightly differently. And that impacts the, um, the dead grass that remains on the surface of the soil. So in his old system, he used to mow after the cows had been through to take down any grass that the cows didn't like. And that way he didn't have an abundance of grasses that the cows didn't like flourishing because they didn't get mowed. In this mob grazing system, the cows are really doing all the mowing. They're forced into such a small area that they don't have to, um, they don't, uh, they really have to eat all of the different types of grass. And then they stomp down a lot of the, the dead grass. So um, even if you just look at the two systems, you'll see in the mob grazing pastures, he's just got a lot more dead material left go. behind because he hasn't mowed it down. And then, uh, thank you. Um, that dead material is supposed to help the soil retain moisture. So um, that's the theory. I don't know that he's convinced that that's really what's happening. So he'd like to have the soil moisture probes in place so that he can see. Got it. Okay. So he can see if that's that's really working. Okay, because he needs the soil moist so that it will grow, continue to grow grass and be productive. And right, 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 right. Okay. So when you're raising cattle, you're really raising grass. Right. You know, you're a, he's a grass farmer, and right. he just happens to have cows, which is how he harvests the grass and turns it into money. Got it. So he really is interested in how productive the grass is and how much, um, and how much he can grow. Okay. Well, thank you then for today, and I'll think mm -hmm. up some more questions.